Well, this episode is going to feature only Japanese wrestling promotions. I made a mistake. Basically, I thought we're going to have Impact and NXT UK. That was my bad. I didn't realize they were doing that whole best of of 2021 they were doing from both shows. So I think that's on me, and I think I deserve a head slap for that. But anyway, it's not in vain. As you know, New Japan Pro Wrestling are in the third day of Road to Tokyo Dome. I'm excited for that. There's a lot of things that are taking place. The feuds are getting bigger and bigger. But the real question remains, what's going to take place? But however, like I said before, we're going to have tons of reviews from past events from the Japanese wrestling scene. We got World Woman Pro Wrestling Diana with one of their shows that took place back in November. Gunbari Pro back in September. And finally... Stardom with one of their the summer tour in Tokyo that took place back in July. This took place right after the Yokohama Dream Cinderella, the the Yokohama Dream Cinderella, which I was unable to see, but I can give you a heads up once we get there to that one. So, I believe it's time for another episode of the Leader Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to Deleted Wrestle Zone. All things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, J Rod here. So, as I said before, we're in day three of New Japan Pro Wrestling Road to Tokyo Dome. As you know, we're getting closer and closer to the start of the year with Wrestle Kingdom 16. I'm excited for it. As you all know, it's a three-day event. It's so going to be great. I can't wait to see what's going to take place. But right now, let's review what took place on day three of Road to Tokyo Dome. First match, we got tag team action. First team is a pair of young lines. We got Rohi Oiwa teaming up with Yudo Nakashima to take on Ryusuke Taguchi and Master Wato. Now, as you know, Master Wato used to be a young lion. He went on excursion for two years in Mexico. But it was a pretty good match. But however, I, one thing I do like when I see young lions face some of the tougher, like the much experienced wrestlers, they always try to teach them how the Boston Crab is pulled on them. So it's always that method for them every single time. But however, in this particular case, it was Master Wato who applied it on Yudo Nakajima. So basically, you have to learn from the guy, but Master Wato picked up a decisive victory by submission. Next up, we got another young line pairing up. We got Kose Fujita teaming with Chaos, consistent of Yoshihashi and Hiroki Goto, the winners of World Tag League, the take on Suzuki Goons, consistent of Taka Michinuku and Dangerous Techers of Taichi and Zack Sabre Jr. Now keep in mind, the Dangerous Techers have always been believing they are the best tag team. But however, Yoshihashi and Goto, ever since losing the never open with six-man tag team titles, they've been mostly focusing on this. So they know they have to put their hands on it. But however, as you know, Taka Michinuku, at certain times, he had to pull up his own weight because he was unsuccessful during tag league. But this time, he was able to pull it off when he put... Fujita in a submission, allowing for them to pick up a decisive victory. But however, what does this mean for both teams? Can Yoshihashi and Goto pick up a victory in Wrestle Kingdom when they challenge Dangerous Techers for the IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team titles? Next up, we got more Suzuki Goon members. We got Minoru Suzuki, the leader, teaming with Junior Heavyweight competitor 
Yoshinobu Kanemaru to take on y Yuji Nagata and, of course, Toro Yano. So, as you know, I mentioned in the previous episode where Yano has to compete against Kanemaru for the KOPW Provisional Trophy. As you know, there's been challengers left and right that challenged them for that trophy, and now it's the whiskey drinker himself, Kanemaru. So basically, Kanemaru has been itching for a chance to challenge for this for this trophy. But however, I don't know if Yano can handle Kanemaru because, as you know, Kanemaru's only main weapon is using, of course, whiskey. So basically, we don't know exactly. But he did pick up the victory when he made Yano drink. So I thought it was interesting to see that. But... We'll see what happens at Wrestle Kingdom when that match takes place. Next up, we got the House of Torture. All members, Dick Togo, Sho, Yujiro, and Evil teaming up to take on so Kojima, Tenzan, and members of Chaos, Sho, and Ishii. Now, keep in mind, I have that distinct feeling that Evil would want to challenge for the Never Openweight title since we know that Evil, Sho, and and Yujiro are the current never open weight eight six man tag team champions. But of course the feud is mostly coming from Chaos and the House of Torture. That's always been the case. However, it's always been the same thing where House of Torture likes to cheat their way through, especially when Dick Togo brings in the garage to choke out his opponents. However, not this time. They met uh, Dick Togo was able to pin Tenzon for the match, and even though there was a beatdown at the post match. It ended with Sho and, I mean, Ishii and Yo fighting back to teach House of Torture a lesson. So the feud between Yo and Sho is far from over. But will Ishii has to put his title on the line against Evil? We just have to wait and see. There's still no official word. But if I was a betting man, I think they might put that match in day two. Next up, we got a 10-man tag team match. We have Tiger Mask. Robbie Eagles, Tommy Akihamna, or as Kevin Kelly would say, hey, look, it's Hamna. The Rainmaker, Kaguchika Okada, and of course, the ace, Hiroshi Tanahashi, taking on the Bullet Club members consistent of the cutest tag team, Ishimuri and El Phantasmo, uh, Chase Owens, the Rogue General, and of course, Kenta. Now, keep in mind, Tanahashi has issued a challenge for a rematch for the IWGP United States Heavyweight Championship that Kenta has been pursuing for almost two years. So basically, he did not want to challenge anybody, but he had no other choice until Tanahashi said that he'll do anything for a chance of the title. However, there's going to be a no disqualification match at Wrestle Kingdom. But this match was more of a brutality in order for Kenta to soften up Tanahashi before we get to Wrestle Kingdom, but however, he wasn't pinned in this particular match. He was actually, I think it was um, Robbie Eagles that fall in the end of, of course, of a Balak Fale or something. I'm not sure, but it was it was Robbie Eagles that was the one that got pinned and lost. But however, during the post match, Kenta gave another whack at Tanahashi's face just for good measures to ensure. He doesn't make it to Wrestle Kingdom. Next up, the rivalry between the United Empire consistent of the Great Okan, Aaron Hanare, and Jeff Cobb versus LIJ. But this time, instead of having, instead of Naito and Sonata teaming up with another member, they decided to team up with, of course, the current IWGP World Heavyweight Champion. But to me, I think this played out pretty well. Let me explain why I say that. As you know, the leader of the United Empire is not in Japan. He refuses to challenge anybody due to the fact that he it, proclaims himself as the real world heavyweight champion. So basically, this is a direct message to Will Ospreay, and I hope he re reads it loud and well. So basically, this was one of those matches that puts to the test, but however, it was, of course, the real world, ch our, the actual world champion uh, Shingo in the other hand he was the one who put the last dragon onto Hanare and I'm sure Will Ospreay 
gets the message, knowing that he's coming for him, even though Will Ospreay doesn't want no piece of him whatsoever. Now, our main event is a pair of the junior heavyweight competitors. As you know, we got LIJ's Bushi and, of course, the winner of the best of the Super Juniors, Hiromu Takahashi, taking on Suzuki Goons, uh, El Desperado, and Doiki. Now, keep in mind, Desperado is the current IWGP junior heavyweight champion. Those two have a long history. They've known each other since the dojo days. But this is one of those matches where I believe they're evened up in certain ways. The way I see it is this. One, these two guys have always been the pinnacle of becoming the champion. Basically, they've been going back and forth. But this time, in this particular match, it ended in a time limit draw. Now, for us Americans here, we believe time limit draw is a load of crap. But in Japan, it's not a big deal. But anything could happen before we get to Wrestle Kingdom between Hiromu and Despi. So I'm looking forward to that. So I think that's pretty much it. What took place on day three. I believe it's time for Diana right now. Okay, it's been a while since I reviewed World Woman Pro Wrestling Diana, or just simply Diana. This is not, an, they did not name this event by any chance. They just, you know, it took place on the 11th, on the, what was it? the 14th of November. Only three matches in this one. First match, we got Rina Imikura taking on Ayako Sato of Crisis. As you know, Ayako likes to use the freaking... Maid's plate, as always, but this time she did not do that. She actually did put her away in some sort of like a similar of the Michinoku driver and ended her match right there real real quick. The next match, we have a pair of tag teams. We got people we know from. We got Hanako, what was it? Hakamori, and of course, Madeline taking on Deborah Kay and Jaguar Yok um, Yokota. As you know, both Jaguar and Madeline are, in fact, in the same faction. But this time, it was more of a feud between both Madeline and Deborah. They always, I think there's a feud, but Jaguar is trying to keep Madeline in check. That's always one of those, those storylines. We always have one of those wrestlers that is possibly a loose cannon. But not this time. But, but out of nowhere, it was Jaguar who pulled up the victory when she pinned Madeline, and I believe she was trying to keep her in place to control her emotions. But in the end of the match, it did not well go very well one way or the other. Now, our main event, you may have seen these ladies at different promotions. We got Akari and Akane Fujita taking on Aruka um, Umasaki and, of course, the founder of Diana. Kyoko Inoue, I thought it was a pretty good match. Really interesting because, uh, as I mentioned before, Akane Fujita has recently no longer will be working with Ice Ribbon. She is going to be a freelancer, which is going to be very interesting to watch. But, however, it was Kyoko who pulled off a powerbomb right at um, Akari in order to win the match. So, it was a pretty interesting one. Some people say uh, it's only three matches. Well, the matches are good, but uh, the event, not so much. But that's how I roll with this promotion mostly. But I believe that's enough with Diana, and I think it's time with Gambari Pro. Okay, so we got Gambari Pro that had their event back on September 25th. And this event is called Bad Communication Ultra Pleasure Style. Uh, only had six matches, but there's only one match that contained a championship match. But it's not part of the DDT brand. It's from another promotion. But I'll get to that in a bit. So let's go from the beginning of the show all the way to the end. Uh, opening match was a six-man tag team match. We have the healthy, consistent of Moiko. Haru, um, Haru Misawa, Katsuki, uh, Shu, um, Shumosuki, and Shu Sukurai taking on 
Nobuhiro Shimatani, Itsuki Aoki, and of course Rocky Kawamura. Now this match was practically very interesting because I did notice that um, how um, there were moments that they kind of showed that the the, the Halfies were like out of step a little bit, but. It was uh, Sh uh, Shimatani who picked up the victory when he pinned Shu Sakurai, and I think that was a big disappointing loss for Shu for uh, Sakurai in order to this one. So that's pretty much what happened in the first match. Second match is another six-person tag team, but it's all women's. We have Asuka, Makoto, and Arakuze team taking on Yuri, Yuna Mizumori, and Yuna. Uh, Manaze, and I thought it was a pretty good match because it showed the first team they were taking things seriously, but I was like um under the impression that Yuri was like the the weakest link in the in the entire match, but it was um Arakuze who actually was the picked up put her in an arm bar and made her to tap out. This led to Yuna um. Manaze tried to start a fight with her, knowing that she can't believe this happened. But, however, Yuri is the new girl on the block, tried to fit in. Basically, she bit off more than she can chew. Next match we have is um, Koko Awazaki, Yomehiro Imanari, taking on Maho and Tatsuhito Takaiwa. Uh, this was a very intense match, um, but I have noticed in this one with um, Takaiwa, he is the much serious individual in this match. You know, Mao, he can hold his own. He throws in a little bit of the comedy, but when it's time to get down, he doesn't. And, of course, it was Takaiwa that, pin that put away um, I oh, who was it? Imanari. And, for, and win the match. So he picked up a good victory on this one. Now our next match. Is a championship match. But it's not from DDT. Or any other promotions. Um, this is from the Tenru Project. It's for the International. Junior Heavyweight Tag Team title. Now. I'm, if you guys don't know. Uh, Shota was, uh, was carrying a title. And it looks like. He, whenever he was in a match. Uh, involving with um, uh, Shinchiru Tominaga and Hagane Shino, it looks more like they want to pe uh, obtain the titles. But however, Shota was trying to avoid it, but it did happen this match. So his part tag team partner Kenichiro Iri actually Iri actually came. It was a good match. I have to say it was really good. But however, it was Shota who was able to help to retain the map, the tiles, and it was a good thing. So, practically, it was a okay match. The next one, oh man, this match was nuts. It's uh, Shikahiro Iri and Kosuke Ishii, who are like two of the biggest powerhouses in this match. I was impressed with the powerhouses, the powerhouse of this match between these two, but however, it was Ishii who picked up the victory with a sort of like a heel knee kick or whatever it was that allowed him to win the match. Well, it was awesome. So Ishii won in that particular way. And our main event was a tag team match. We have first team Kengo Mashimo teaming up with Arashima taking on Is uh, Isami Kodaka. And Ken Oka. This is one of those matches where, you know, Ken Oka is the veteran, but this is like one of the pin, uh, pivotal things on his career. I thought it was great, but it was Kengo Mashimo who pinned Oka in this one. And, you know, excuse me, but it was a big disappointing loss for Ken Oka. So we'll see what happens then. So, um, the show was pretty well. I enjoyed it. There were some good matches. I mean, the, se the semi-final match was the best one for me. But, 
But yeah, but there will be more Gambari Pro Wrestling because I like Gambari. It's a lot different. And hope you guys can see it one day. But right now, let's move on with the final review, Stardom. Okay, the last thing I'm going to review is from Stardom. This is part of the Cinderella Summer Tour in Tokyo. This took place back on the 17th of June. This is day two on this one. Now, there's a lot of things that took place afterwards. Um, the reason this was, I mentioned this, it took place right after the Yoka, Yokohama Dream Cinderella. Um, there's been a lot of development that took place in that particular match. For example, the future of Sarnam title was decided between uh, Mina Shirakawa and Unagi. Well, Mina won that match. There was a lot of talk about that, and I'll get to it in a bit. Uh, Starlight Kid embraces the dark path. Very, very dark. And of course, um, Tam defeated Sayaka Mitani to retain the title. Uh, but however, her old friend, now enemy, Starlight Kid became the next challenger. But the biggest disappointment was the main event for that one, where it was Utami Hayashida putting her, the red belt on the line against Natsuko Tora of Oda Tai, but the match had to be called because apparently she torn an ACL or something. So the match was decided it was over. So it was a disappointing match, but what took place afterwards, we'll discuss it a little bit. <coughs> Kid, who the first match was in fact a three-way match. As you know, Kid has embraced the dark path. She's ended up in a sort of a two-on-one situation where two members of Queen's Quest are in this. We got Hina and Azumi, but somehow Starlight Kid, who with her new embrace to become this dark path of Odetai made her stronger than ever was before. So she's now breaking out. So she was able to pick up the victory when she pinned I Ina. Next match, we have tag team action. We have um, Hanan teaming up with Koguma, taking on Lady C and Tam Nakano. As you know, Lady C is not affiliated with anybody, but... It was a pretty good match. It was showed a lot of character, but however, it was um, Koguma who picked up the victory when she pinned, of course, Lady C. Now, Lady C is the one who has barely has barely not enough experience, but she's learning very quickly, so that allowed her to to win the match. Next up, we have BDM consistent of Micah, Julia, and Suri taking on Queen's Quest. Sayaka Mitani, Momo Wananabe, and Utami Hayashida. This match was insane. Now, there's a bit of a sort of like a rivalry between both Sudi and Utami. Um, Usudi wants to get the red belt, and I think that's kind of like what the story has been built up on that. But these two factions really hate each other completely. So, But out of nowhere, it ended in a time limit draw. So... Basically, nothing happened. Now, our next match is for the future of Stardom Bell. This is part two between both Unagi and Mina of the Cosmic Angels. This was something different. Now, there's been talk about this when Mina won this match. There were those who kind of felt it should have been Unagi. The reason this happened, and I agree with it, Unagi has developed more better than Mina. That's one of the cases that kind of been brought up during that time. And it made more, more sense. But I think this one <coughs> kind of puts it in a way where maybe the belt should be with Unagi. And, of course, Unagi picked up a really good win, becoming the next uh, future champion. However, whenever there's a new champion, there's always the first challenger. And the first challenger was Rina of Odetai. Now, Rina considers this title is for the younger wrestlers, but Unagi felt it doesn't matter. You see, Unagi is 33 years old. Ina is in her 
is still a high schooler. And that kind of plays out. But Unagi doesn't back down from a fight. Now the main event is the Starlight Kid recaptured gauntlet match. This is where Odetai gave her, gave Mayu Iwatani a chance to reclaim um, Starlight Kid. It became a five on one gauntlet match. I have to say Mayu went through hell on this one. Hell and back. Odetai tried to cheat their way through, tried to ensure she doesn't win. Nothing stopped her. She was determined to win Kid back. And when she did, Kid rejected her, believing that she will surpass her as her enemy. But she does say that she would rather have Mayu join her by her side instead. So basically, she her embracement with Oda Tai. But here's who got eliminated from the order of Oda Tai. Rina, Fukigen Def, Saki Kashima, Konami, and Ruka. So that's who they got in. But however, because this match ended in Mayu as the winner, Oda Tai has made it clear that Stars is done. But however, it did not finish in that way. Apparently, stars are getting better. And to me, down right now at this point, in the present time, stars are getting a bit more momentum. Because A, they gained a new member. And this person I did not expect. But I'll get to that when the timing's right. We'll see what happens then. So I think that's pretty much it, what I got for all of you guys. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, me reviewing all the Japanese wrestling. Well, guess what? The next one will feature, and it's also my birthday. Yes, folks, it will be my birthday. So you can leave me a happy birthday greeting. I'm cool with that. I'll tell everybody this on a separate video by myself, but we'll see how it goes. But coming up, I will throw in more Japanese wrestling since nothing big is taking place. So we got more on New Japan Pro Wrestling with day four of Road to Tokyo Dome. Uh, we'll throw in some Sandai Girls and Ice Ribbon and, of course, DDT Pro Wrestling. And there'll be more of this stuff. I'm barely... I'm almost catching up with everything else but for now i'll see you guys in the next dwz time same dwz channel i must bid all of you adieu so goodbye Mwah. and have a nice day bang